and testing one two three hello everyone welcome i'm here once again with uh, francis bull who is at the moment at speaker's corner giving people a hard time i believe and um, the reason he's still there is he was involved in a very heated discussions uh, thank you very much francis for joining us despite the circumstances heated discussions uh, thank yes, you very um, much for joining us audio, despite sorry the circumstances right, discussion uh, so i had to join you from speaker's corner because i was going to be heading back home but sadly sir um some islamists came up to me and they started threatening and they will slash my neck uh they will cause harm to me and they will make sure that i am no longer alive let me guess so, they were buddhists buddhists threatened to 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 cut at your neck right buddhists i think they i think they looked like bit buddhist but they were true buddhists i guess bearded buddhists like those get, fake buddhists like, with the beards <laughs> maybe maybe so that's that's one thing that is scary that is scary that they did this in public that they the religion of peace camel peace threatening to cut you at the neck and we're supposed to believe oh. that oh yes sir. yes absolutely sir no, that is horrendous that's actually how do you feel about that oh i am so used to it like i have a police officer behind me so literally uh when this can these things can happen uh sadly the police officer won't even be help me because they would say this is speaker's corner you're allowed to say such things but they say to me that with etiquette but when it comes to other things there's no etiquette so uh, this is a double no standard you have no speech when it comes to inciting violence or threatening death exactly sir that's a crime yeah that is a crime so which is why sadly i was going to go home but unfortunately it got me stuck over here because i was surrounded by at least 30 30 different islamists who wow. were bashing me and telling me off and then trying to uh intimidate me and try to shut me up because they said you can't speak about our prophet or allah the way you do and i was like this is free speech i can say whatever the hell you want if it triggers and offends you not my not my business cry me a river yeah cry me a river to the sea when people say from the river to the sea i like my response is cry me a river to the sea cry oh, me so a river to the sea uh speak a corner Inshallah, will be free. Will be free. <laughs> Amen. Wow. So you you really have courage, man. That that's a lot of courage. Um, yeah. What well, what gives you the courage? And and what have you always been someone who's willing to speak out and stand their ground? What is your, your I, purpose, your mission? Your what keeps keeps I, going? I genuinely believe the courage comes from the Lord. In all honesty, I did not expect to have this much courage, like the way. I have had so far since I've come into Christianity properly and I think it's more because uh because I'm seeing the effects that is taking over society even in London when you walk around anywhere and you can see uh like Ramadan is being celebrated so openly Ashura is being celebrated so openly and people are being threatened just because they just because they say why do you do these things that this is this is barbarism but just because they say it's barbaric they can be arrested for it and that's why i have to say like look we are allowed to criticize anyone but the thing is you guys say you guys can go around criticize everyone you feel like but i'm not allowed to say anything wow. because yes. it hurts your feelings i'm sorry i'm going to have a stance and then especially my courage comes from being a survivor as i mentioned before i work with survivors and someone had to speak up against pedophilia which is a vice right. in the communities in, the, in all the muslim yeah. countries and in between the muslims themselves so true thanks just pause one on please emmanuel shahid is in the chat welcome thank you emmanuel great to see you in a while um also guys i want to make one quick detour before we speak more to francis uh i want to go there's a couple of things that have come up in my recent discussion on the sspx um so many people have said the sspx is in communion with the catholic church but they are not these are the this, this is an official statement from the catholic magisterium the sspx is not in proper communion with the catholic church they have no canonical state status or legitimate authority right 
The letter from Pope Benedict the 16th states that until the doctrinal questions are clarified, the society has no canonical status, and its ministers, even though they have been freed of the ecclesiastical penalty that the, the excommunication was lifted, do not legitimately exercise any ministry in the church, right? So the SSPX does not have a canonical status, right? So hopefully that is clear, right? And the SSPX has frustrated all the efforts made to ensure the full communion of the church with the church. In other words, the Catholic Church has reached out to the SSPX and they have refused to enter into communion. So the issue is that these people have made it very difficult to try to integrate them because they frustrated all the efforts made, right? And um, yeah, so just to put that, this is some of the references here, okay? I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's on the screen. You, you're welcome to read through it, pause and read through it later, right? So, and then on top of that, people have said that Lefebvre acted out of necessity, right? That is not an excuse. They said he was sick and the canonical law allows someone to act out of necessity when unwell. Yes, to a degree, right? So the bishop has, a, has ordinary, proper, and immediate authority to exercise his office, right? Which includes, he can ordain priests and bishops. However, the bishop's authority is not absolute. The Pope retains the power to reserve cases to himself or another authority. This includes the ordination of bishops. The Pope can override any bishop. So, in other words, right, he's allowed to, however, he must have the permission, right, he must have the written invitation of the Metropolitan and the bishops of that region. If he does so irregularly, the ordinations are null and he shall immediately be deposed. So, he was rightfully, rightfully excommunicated. On top of that, it says, if he's sick, he can do so, right? However, his authority is limited by the higher authority of the Pope, and he has to consult with other ecclesiastical authority. Bishop Lefebvre, the anti-Semite, went off the reservation. He had no right to do what he did, so the excuses that have been given in that regard, unfortunately, those are not valid. So I just wanted to make that point for those. Uh, Francis is a new convert, Manuel. He has been, been Christian for something like eight months. He's going to tell the story. Um, so yeah, let's switch back. So that's everything on that point. So, so um, yeah. So Emmanuel Shahid is also a convert, I believe. Emmanuel, yeah, he converted some time ago from Islam. Uh, I've spoken with him in the past. Fantastic guy, very very friendly, very nice, um, very good uh, evangelist. So, yeah. So t tell us what you what happened again at, at at Speaker's Corner. What you do there, what things are like, and then also refresh us on on your journey how you started why you moved and just briefly bring us up to speed and then we can tackle any additional questions sure so i have been uh what do you call it so currently i'm a speaker school the background yep. says um i am um, so i'm an, i'm an ex-muslim i used to be a muslim and uh i was what do you call it obviously being around pakistan and being around the secular the secular Sikh society while in pakistan I grew up to be not so devout Muslim, and which I didn't have that affiliation or association with Islam like a lot of people actually do, uh, being in Pakistan. But obviously, because of my paternal side, I had a lot of like uh, atheists and agnostics in my family, which is why it was more different uh, upbringing, because I already grew up in a very broader, uh, broader mindset. Like, obviously, girls in bikini and watch MTV. And, you know, like growing up and doing all of these things, a mum playing Madonna and the video videos of Madonna like a virgin and all. <laughs> so I grew up in a very secular home, uh, but and then I would call it the, the UK comes in the in the play uh, where I was never a devout Muslim, but I had an on and off phase here where I started going to the mosque and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out for me because when the when the craziness of Islam is that think from the heart but don't think from the brain is somehow of an issue for me because if I am someone who studies philosophy, arts, and does uh, like have deeper conversation uh, when it comes to spirituality or when it comes to religious or when it comes to Christology or theology, Whatever you want to name it, I'm openly conversed about anything, and I've been told to shut up. That was a that was a red flag for me to start with. 
But then uh, one day, uh, coming, to the, coming to the point where I left Islam, is because my sister first left Islam while in Ramadan 2017, then my mom, and then me. I left Islam in two hours because, as I said, I mentioned earlier on, uh, Aisha was six years old, and then marriage was consummated when she was nine. And in between the consummation of the marriage, from six to nine, she was being tying. Like tying is a method where anyone, anyone with some dignity would completely be, you know, like it, it'll, it'll cause a lot of issues mentally. That's how can an old 54 year old man can do something like this to his little child. So it's the moral issues with Islam that yes. let you out, the moral questions. Let me out, exactly. And that yes. was it for me. And then I, I then I especially, after reading, after reading Hadith and then, uh, and then literally understanding that, yeah, this is says in its sources, and then reading Surah 55 verse 4, that allowing marriage for your children, a marriage, marriage to a child, uh, and the divorce period being three months, and then, and I don't know, I don't know the verse in the Surah, but then the marriage has to be consummated. That's what the divorce period, the, uh, the divorce happened. Then I came to realize, okay, so even Allah allows pedophilia, and that were, that's where in two hours I said, screw this, I'm out. I can't resonate or reason with this whatsoever. There's no justification for any illness like this whatsoever. So that's what made me leave Islam in 2017. And moving fast forward, uh, from 2017 till 2023, I became a Christian in 2023. Unfortunately, 2021, I tried to go to the church and try to become a Christian, but I think the Lord uh, called me, but I didn't accept him at that time. And then in 2023, uh, in August, something happened. It changed my life. I had self-acknowledgement of an, an understanding where how much of a sinful person I am, and I need to completely flip myself. I need to change. Or what am I doing? And just just trying to ask God to help me and guide me. And that's what that was it. The most spiritual experience. I would. I can't explain. The words are not there to to comprehend what I felt. But yes, this was a basic sort of common. So, how can I say? It's a concise way of saying of my journey, but yes. Yeah. Please. So, what led you to, I'm just curious, um, to, to go from being a recent convert to actually wanting to do what you're doing at, at Speaker's Corner? What, what, what made that, that happen? I think Speaker's Corner was a bit of a challenge to start with because I think I came, uh, I came with an understanding where I need to sort of converse with people and tell people the sort of ugliness in Islam and especially try having a re- decent conversation with some Muslims who can, who, who know how to converse. But I have some people that I have really beautiful conversation with, but unfortunately many of the people, it's more of a, like they bash you or they threaten you, they try intimidating you. Like earlier on, uh, they just think that they can do it and they can get away with it, but unfortunately, they can't. Um, they can't bring my morale down because I have the tool of the world with me. Amen. So, for that particular reason, I think it was a calling just to say to Muslims uh, about please take within yourself of where you are and who you're following and just with reason within yourself of what you're doing. And I have to give a good news as well because some uh, some gentleman earlier on did mention to me that because of what my video uh, went viral, two families left Islam because of that video. After we after the way I spoke to them and decided looking at the sources, the video where I shouted the, about Muhammad and everything, that's what happened. And God is good. Amen. Okay. What do you think is the effect of what you're doing at um, Speaker's Corner? What do you think is the, the outcome? Do you have an effect on the listeners? Or do you have an effect on the person you're dealing with? Because they may not actually be open to your message. So what do you think happens with the audience and the message that you give? 
I generally believe, like, maybe uh, the, people, the person I'm conversing with, obviously, there's an ego issue, right? Like, they can't just claim to be like, okay, they are going to agree with me and they're going to say, yeah, you're right, like, this is an issue. Certain people do, don't get me wrong. Like, certain people really open their eyes and say, yeah, we also believe this is wrong. So then they go back and then they say, yeah, we will come back to you and speak to you about these things. Uh, the listeners, I think the more of a, the more influence comes when people listen to the videos and and then they a lot of people have come up to me so far and all these people have just come out of nowhere and just literally said we just want to come and tell you thank you for what you do. Uh, we are listening, we are watching, and we help uh, we we make Muslims watch your videos. And it really, really helps what you're doing because someone out there is speaking with experience and especially people are resonating with it because there's emotions involved too. So I think that is something which is more helpful than anything. And that's why I'm here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry, if the audience has any questions, please drop those in the chat. I'm trying to monitor the chat as well. And um, yeah. Um, do you think that safety is an issue? It will be an issue. Safety, safety is an issue. Uh, unfortunately, that's what happened. Uh, literally, like just earlier on. Uh, that's why I'm sorry, Chad. The background is just speaker's corner, but it would have been a, it would have been in my home, uh, at the, and the comfort and everything, and I would have seen your chat alongside on my iPad. But sadly, uh, I was surrounded by 30, uh, 30 different Muslims. Uh, who were trying to subjugate and intimidate me and ask me to shut up and not speak about the Prophet or the Allah. And I was being harassed. I was being thrown stuff at. And only thing I said to them is, try me. I'm not going to shut up. You, I have the living God with me. They try intimidating you. They try subjugating you. They try, they try saying all the nasty things they can. Like literally, people are saying to my face, they'll slash my neck. They will, they will end me. They will, they will just do the things that I can't, they, I can't imagine. They'll bring the whole mosque at me, and they will track me down. They'll figure out. Even though that has happened, unfortunately, uh, the toll has been taken. The video went viral, and since the video went viral, a lot of people have disassociated, uh, disassociated with me. A lot of people have gone to the point where they don't want to, um, what do you call it, have anything to do with me. So the NGOs and the people that I was working with, unfortunately, they're all completely tied, cut off their ties. And uh, like, there, there we go, there, another, another Islamist dog. Get lost, I'm on a video. Come on, move, move, walk away. Yeah, Take they, him away. they're not very respectful. They're not very yeah, respectful. Yeah, they, they, these, these, stop barking. Right. Uh, anyway, sorry, sorry about that, guys. This is what yeah. happens uh, when you convert, when you try having a decent conversation. These Islamist dogs come to you, and they start barking. Yeah, Tell take away. Come on, do push, <clears throat> push, dog. Right. Tell me something. Do you see yeah. a change? Drink camel in... urine. Drink camel urine, chal. Drink camel urine. <laughs> yeah, come on, piss off, piss off, chal. Push. Do you Islamist see? dog. Sorry. Do you see a? I mean, look, it's obvious in London, the, the, the Muslim mayor celebrated Eid and Ramadan, but didn't celebrate yeah. Easter. There was no Easter yeah. celebration. There was no Easter decorations. Christianity yeah. took a back seat and uh, Islam was supreme. And yeah. you see, you see London is what, 30% white or something like that. Now it's, it's not very Christian, but do you think that what, what is happening at Speaker's Corner is actually having an effect? Do you think that that despite things looking a little bleak, despite Muslims being so dominant, do you think that that this will have an effect? Well, what do you think will turn this around? What do you think is having an effect on these people? So what's happened is like a lot of people have like, like it's, within just two weeks I've been coming here and even today, third week, three weeks consecutively, people have come up to me and people have said, thank you for what you do. People have come up to me and said to me, that we, what you're doing, we can't say anything because we have we have kids, we have life to live, we have our uh, or we have our households, and we don't want to jeopardize our situation. But we say someone has to do it, and thank you for what you're doing, even though this is a huge sacrifice. So I'm doing it just because I have to say something. I'm living in London. London 
where you where where people at speakers corner this area itself you could say whatever you want to but now you have like look at all these muslims look at all how many muslims there are there's a single yeah. jew at the back and he's between all the muslim and the muslims target him constantly there is all these muslims talking about everything they want to but if we say something about the prophet it rises them up no we need to come to a point where i say if i'm walking on the streets i i have to watch my back constantly but they still i say that someone has to do it in order to bring a change because unfortunately if everyone takes a back seat and let these people do anything they will just carry on these people are these people are politically minded so, and uh, so, you, so so you're saying that there's a threat to your life a threat to your safety and you're not allowed to talk about muhammad yeah uh when i talk about muhammad the police can be called so what i do if i can say it speak as corner and I, and my videos can go viral god has blessed me so thankfully that is happening okay. at least people know that i'm conversing in a place i might not be able to do that out around london wherever i feel like as yeah. speak as corner i can but thankfully i do have good conversation with muslims uh in, sometimes anywhere in, right. outside uh, you know like outside speakers corner can but you see that, this screen so, sorry francis can, can you see the screen at all i can yeah uh your screen yeah can you see what oh sorry i'm not sure hold on let me my my back give me one moment i forgot i need to share but you're on your phone that's why i'm gonna share my screen you can see here you can you see what's popping up there now uh yes i can the unsheathed sword yes the unsheathed sword this is a this is a sharia manual the unsheathed sword against the one who insults the messenger that would be muhammad not against the one who insults allah right the one who insults yeah. the messenger by sheikh al-islam ibn taymiyyah the sheikh al-islam ibn taymiyyah is also the godfather of jihad he is the main jihad sheikh in islam right <clears throat> let's look at the chapter headings right i'll go to chapter one what they call here let me just bring this up some have been on this channel a while will have seen this others this will be new to the first issue can you just read the first issue can you see that well enough to to read it yes whoever insults a prophet uh, uh, um, is to be killed whether they are muslim or a disbeliever so you can see there's evidence it's a religion of peace right the second issue very peaceful. <laughs> the second the issue second, is the second issue killing is prescribed on him the one who insults a prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh and it is not permissible to to imprison or show favor to him or to ransom him oh brilliant so, yeah and then the third issue uh the third issue any muslim or non muslim who insults the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh is to be killed and repentance is not sought from him all right so as you can see islam is clearly a religion of forgiveness of patience oh, of tolerance beautiful Uh, this is smash Allah. <laughs> smash Allah indeed. Yes. So it says here the contents of this book concern the Islamic ruling upon those who insult the final prophet and messenger Muhammad. Right? So now insulting is defined very simply someone who doesn't believe that Muhammad is perfect. Right? The objective of yeah. this work is to clarify the Islamic ruling on this subject. So the first issue the one who insults muhammad whether muslim or non-muslim is to be killed they're to be killed even if they pay a protective tax in a muslim state and then there is clarification of what constitutes insulting <clears throat> let's have a quick look at the book so this is so the chapter whoever insults the prophet is to be killed this is the general view of the scholars this is the general view of all the scholars the scholars have consensus that whoever insults muhammad is to be killed malik light ahmad ishaq and ashafi also said this the muslims have unanimous agreement upon killing whoever insults the prophet it is the ruling that whoever insults other than him is to be whipped in other words you could insult a lie and be whipped to insult muhammad you die the consensus is taken from the consensus from the tabiun and the companions of allah's messenger so the apostles and the apostles of the apostles there is consensus upon the obligation of killing such a person the muslims have a consensus that who insults allah or his messenger or rejects anything from what has been revealed by allah such a person is a disbeliever 
and I do not know anyone who differed concerning the obligation of killing such a person. The scholars have consensus that whoever insults the messenger, and here's where they define insulting the messenger, attributing a defect to him. So if you claim that Muhammad had any defects, such a person is a disbeliever, and they have an obligation to kill such a person. The Muslim who insults is killed. There is no disagreement. And this is the view of the four Imams and others. <clears throat> and then the Muslim and the disbeliever are to be killed. And then they speak of the hadith of the woman when you heard her insulting the Prophet. And there is no difference of opinion narrated from him concerning the killing. This book goes on and on and on like this for page after page. It's all about killing those who insult Muhammad, who don't believe Muhammad was perfect. So do you understand, when you raise these issues, when you raise these moral concerns, you are claiming that Muhammad is not perfect, and they are following Sharia law. Sadly, uh, this is what it feels like. Like they, they impose this rule on you in London while not understanding we live in the west like literally today someone told me you should shut up or otherwise you will watch what will happen to you like and i'm and i told him you can, if you feel like that you can go back to your muslim country you know what because no one's going to insult anyone there but if you feel like that someone is insulting a prophet but we are allowed to so i'm sorry but you are a pedophile apologist if it makes you it may if it hurts your feelings well, I'm sorry, I don't really care about your feelings because I'm, yeah. more, I'm more associated with the feelings of a child, not with the feelings of a pedophile. Yeah, Whatever. no, agreed. I mean, and um, Belinda says the problem is Muhammad insults himself due to his heinous behavior. So saying oh, yeah. the truth is insulting, which is, which is exactly the case, which is exactly yeah. the case. And um, it just goes on and on like this, right? Insulting the prophet, then such a person is to be killed. And it just goes on and on. And then. They say here, when a person does this repeatedly, the Imam has to kill them. The Imam has to kill them. And they say here, and they speak of prescribed by the Sharia, and then the, the killing due to the likes of these reasons. And it says here, they call this the political killing. And it is for the Imam to give a discretionary punishment with killing. <clears throat> so Islam does political assassinations. Well... Let's just say, guys, if you don't hear me, hear from me for a while, just know what happened. <laughs> so, oh, well. is my, so, question is, is Muhammad considered of the same substance as Allah in Islam? Yes, he is. This is in the Sira. Uh, you will find it in the Sira where he is. So, yeah. Of course, um, because if I if I abuse Allah, they don't have they won't have an issue. Like they don't feel that same issue if i see something about him they're vile up more than anything and i'm like well i think unless Allah's not less important than muhammad with the looks of it so they just prove themselves on there yeah i'm just going to bring up something on ribba which is slander um this is okay this one is in context of a dead person but it's still the same point can you read this or should i read this for you can you see that yeah sure um if he notices something good uh, it is sunnah to mention it, but if he notices something bad, it is unlawful to mention it, as this is slander. Gibba. Gibba, yeah. So, so, in other words, noticing and mentioning something that is true is slander. Now, in the rest of the world, if you say something that is false about someone, this is slander. In Islam, slander is telling the truth. <laughs> That's it. Uh, why am I not surprised? Yeah, this is, and then slander, ghibba, is in the Sharia. The meaning of slander, we'll have a quick look at that. Slander means to mention anything concerning a person that he would dislike. <clears throat> so, if uh, someone does wrong, if a Christian man does something wrong, we can say that Christian man has done something wrong. But, because, but we should shut up, because a Christian man is a Christian, so we should shut up. Like they will apply that rule constantly. Oh, your Christian man did this. Your prophet in the Christianity did this. But if I say to a Muslim, your Muhammad did this, that we are the baddies. But don't mention Muhammad. But mention anyone else. But don't mention yeah. Muhammad because <laughs> double standards in every regard, in all honesty. Yeah, I actually want to bring up. Um... 
Yeah, I think it's volume two. Let me bring up something with regards to lying in Islam. Was it volume three? Ah, yes, volume three, one twenty. So it's, let me bring up something that is relevant to this, just to try to describe to the audience and. <clears throat> Page 108. So let me just go there. So notice here, this this we'll discuss here. Um, uh, it will take me a moment to find the necessary reference. It's all right, take your time. Notice it says here in the Sharia, false speaking is permissible. False speaking. What is false speaking, Francis? False speaking, as, as in like you can lie for the sakes of making something yes. look good. Yes, no, it says here, sometimes false speaking becomes compulsory. False mm. speaking is better than speaking the truth. So, to compromise between two parties, false speaking is lawful. So, in other words, if you are arguing to say false in the battle, or to compromise between two parties, or to preserve goodwill, right, and they've got multiple discussions. So, in other words, if he who settles disputes between two parties is not a liar. So, when you are debating with the Muslim and he settles the dispute mm. or creates compromise, he can lie, and that is not considered lying because he's bringing, you know, the settlement of the dispute. He's bringing compromise. So, therefore, his lies are not counted by Allah as lies. Right? So. And the lie which is spoken to settle the matters between two contending parties is not written. So he can lie, and Allah does not regard it as lies. It's a permissible lie. So what does this show? What does it show you? It shows you we can say we can say what what you call it whatever we want, and Allah will be okay with it. So if I can lie to my teeth about oh brother, Alhamdulillah, everything's all right, brother, like all good, brother. Like, you know what, like my wife is, my wife is brilliant. My wife, my wife is just perfect. You know, like even though she spent nights somewhere out, out there, but she's still perfect, brother, because the thing is, I know and I know. Lying to the teeth just to make her look good. And then yep. lying about Muhammad, but oh, but Muhammad, you know, he didn't marry Aisha. Like that's a slander. Like we don't believe, except that hadith. But the thing is that hadith is wrong because there was some anti-Muslim bigotry uh, that these people had, uh, they wrote this hadith and they brought it on sunnah.com. And I'm like, wow, okay. So just lie and lie and lie. It's constant just regards to what's happening here. Everyone, every Muslim has just one agenda on their mind. Lie to their teeth just to make Islam look good. But I, that's where I say, I'm going to expose you because uh, your pedophile prophet, he needs to be exposed. So you can you can show whatever you want to. But unfortunately, you guys, you guys, your own sources kills Islam. Yeah. So smash Allah. No, for instance, we've got here. This is a chapter on lying in the Sharia. And hopefully the audience will learn from this. Notice there's a chapter called lying and it says here permissible lying section R 8.2 and then circumventing those forbidding the permissible. Now the permissible is to spread Islam. You and I are circumventing or we are, oh no, we are forbidding the permissible. They have to circumvent us, get around us. And then they talk about obligatory lying, obligatory lying right here. So they are allowed to utilize obligatory lying. That's legal for them to use. And then they can also give a misleading impression. So they actually teach this as Islamic law. And <clears throat> yeah, your thoughts on that before I go on? Uh, it's more like every carnal desire one person can think of, Islam allows it. Islam allows lying. Islam allows pedophilia. Islam allows uh, sexual slaves. Islam allows keeping slaves. Islam allows you lying. Islam allows you every carnal, ugly desire one man can have or yeah. a woman can have. It allows it. Yes, Literally, it that's where it proves. It, it violates allows. the biblical law. I mean, the Mosaic law exactly. violates the Ten Commandments. It violates the New Testament. Oh. Uh, oh, La exactly. Verité en Français says... Christian Prince says he has degrees in Islamic law, but I've never heard him mentioning the Sharia. And he says, Lloyd is a master. Well, thank you. I've spent years reading it. I have asked people, people tell me that Christian Prince knows the Sharia. I've heard this many times. People have told me he does, and I've asked them for evidence that he actually mentions and discusses the Sharia. I have seen zero, literally zero evidence of that. I would love to see some. Never seen it. Never, ever seen it. Um, 
The Sharia goes on. This one is Ghazali again, the greatest scholar in Islam. There is no sin in that falsehood which benefits a Muslim or removes a harm from him. So there is no sin in the lie that benefits a Muslim or removes a harm from him. And it says to disclose an obscene act is also an obscene act, right? Every man should save his life and honor by taking recourse to falsehood. Save your honor by lying. If in, and it says here, if harm has caused more than benefit in case of speaking the truth, you may avoid speaking the truth. In other words, you may lie. It goes on to say that if you don't speak about an evil thing, then Allah will not speak about that evil thing on the day of judgment. If you hide your secrets, then Allah will hide your secrets too. So, so that also it says somewhere here in the Sharia. So as long as you don't talk about it, Allah won't talk about it and we'll both look the other way. So, your thoughts on that? Your thoughts on this, uh, this stuff about the Sharia here? I would honestly, every time I hear something about Islam, the Sharia law, that everything, it always baffles me. There is nothing in there that I can sense it is anywhere, like, with some sort of, like, piety or with some sort of, like, a love or with some sort of, like, a, you know, like, a virtuous thing. I only see the ugliness, uh, one after the other, one after the other. So... Honestly, it doesn't baffle me, but it just somehow surprises me more and more. Like, there is so much into this cult, and people still follow it, while the sources are available to everyone. Like, that's the awful truth. So that's what I will have to say. Just the saddest truth, brother. Yeah, yeah. Did you know any of this stuff? in Islam when you were a Muslim or did you like know it implicitly rather than necessarily explicitly or do you know of people who knew this? I knew of lying in the case of uh, rectifying things like uh, because I was told as a kid like you can lie about 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 things in regards to you know when it comes to settling some sort of discourse or if it's if it's positively impacting someone you can lie about those things uh, because that's a white lie. And I'm like, but then I started questioning these things myself. And I was like, how can like something be, like a, how, how can something be a lie in regards to something? And how can a white lie or a black lie lie is a lie, right? That's where the issue is. Yeah. So. I'm trying to find some, some highlighted text. <clears throat> um. Yeah, but t tell me, did the imams say any things like this in the mosques, in their sermons? Did, did they say anything of that type? So in, in the mosque, uh, wherever, whichever mosque I've been to, whichever country, always they had this one message where, you know, like, Islam is about, like, the, the peace and the love, and we need to spread this because we want everyone to go to heaven. But we also understand that we have to push this on other people because sometimes... You have to be aggressive in order to show that we are doing this for your betterment. And, and I questioned once, which got me into a lot of trouble, uh, that if we have to be so aggressive towards other people who are not Muslims, why is there no freedom of choice in the religion? Then you say that, but the thing is, but we're doing it for the betterment. So why, why should we not trump over their freedom of choice? And that made me wonder even more. And I'm like, so we don't, we don't, we, like, first of all, you constantly quote me the verse where you keep your religion, I have my religion. Okay. And then you say to me, we have this aggression. And then I was vilified and, and then I was barred. So never again I could go to that mosque and for my own safety. Wow. If so this is for betterment, does, does Islam teach love of others? Does it teach love of Christians, love of the, the, those who are outside of Islam. No, uh, you have to you have to make sure you treat your Muslims first, and then if you uh, if you want to bring them to Islam, and you have to have the good intentions of bringing them to Islam. But when you do this thing, do this with the intention only to bring them to Islam. Otherwise, you don't care about them. So the only perspective they showed me was bring them to Islam, call them for Islam, and then treat them better. Okay, I'm gonna I'm show. Like, okay. Sure. 
Um, for instance, this is called cursing when lawful. So the, a curse means to drive away a thing from God. This applies to the things which are already distant from Allah, such as infidelity and oppression. Okay, fine. It is lawful to curse the unbelievers and the oppressors with such words as are permitted by the Sharia. So it is lawful to curse the unbelievers. And, and of course, we're oppressors because we don't accept Islam. And of course, the second stage is curse, especially upon a people as curse upon the Jews and upon the Christians. We're first in the list. Jews and Christians. Jews and Christians. So they teach always, always within always. the Sharia cursing upon non-Muslims. Yeah. So love thy neighbor, right? Or hate thy neighbor or curse thy neighbor. No, no, no. Curse thy neighbor unless they're Muslim. Uh, but the thing is then I was, then I was enlightened about this as well. If the Jews and the Muslims are, or the Jews, sorry, the Jews and the Christians are at the quality of the worst of the creatures anyways, but then those who leave Islam, they are the worst of the worst. I was like, okay, so first you say my religion, your religion, and then you also want to kill them, and you call them, they are the worst of all. Mm, there's something like a issue here. And that's where things started going more downhill for me when it comes to Islam. Okay, so you can see here this again from the Reliance of the Traveler. Links in the description to this particular Sharia manual. It's the most popular one in the world. It says here, apostasy from Islam, Ridda. Section 0, 8.0. What does it say in the next line, Francis? Oh, whoever uh, voluntarily leaves, leaves Islam is killed. Mm, yeah, I should be killed, shouldn't I, really? Yes, That's and there is no indemnity, no expiation. You don't, you don't have to ask for forgiveness for killing him. And um, yeah, so it says here, Leaving Islam is the ugliest form of unbelief and the worst. And it may even come about through sarcasm. A Muslim can tell a joke and that actually can put him in a case situation of, of unbelief. Right? And it says here, when a person who has reached puberty and is sane voluntarily apostatizes from Islam, he deserves to be killed. Okay? You can ask him to repent and return to Islam. But if he refuses, he is immediately killed. Right? There is no indemnity for killing an apostate since it is killing someone who deserves to die. And why three consecutive weeks they've been telling me that they'll end me because they slash my throat or they will make sure that I am no longer uh, able to do what I am because they will do something that I, is unimaginable. Uh, so yeah, the peaceful Muslims are obviously showing their Sharia law on me. But sadly, I'm not a coward. God is No, that, that much is true. You're very brave to do what you do. The fact that you're there, I mean, that's, 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 that takes, again, a lot of courage. I yeah. look at all the Muslims. Like, the majority of Muslims now, literally, this, the majority of Muslims right now, like many of the Christians leave the park just by like 7 p.m., which is very, I guess, quarter past seven now. But because of their own safety and security, they have to leave the park. But there's some few Christians who stay back, stay back and especially... One has to show that you cannot affect us. You might think that you're you're bigger in number, but we are we are stronger because God is with us. Amen. Yeah, amen. Um, just to come back to to questions that I that I may have asked, but uh, I'd like to. Do you think that this has a positive impact? Do you see this has a change or impact causes Muslims to doubt or the audience to doubt? Today, I yeah, I'll share with you that today I had a conversation with a uh, with someone who was born in Saudi Arabia and he was born in actually Jeddah, and he was he had a very decent conversation with me. He said like I, he said I have some issues with Islam too when it comes to like here like obviously the pedophilia part of it, and uh, but he's still a Muslim and he was trying to defend Islam in regards to like okay if we look if we look, uh we look away from these things and we sort of have different understanding we have these traditions and everything else the food the, the thankfully i had such a good conversation with that guy uh in all honesty the most concise way i would say is that i ended up giving him gospel of john and i gave him i made him made him read chapter 
chapter four, uh, just right, uh, like Jesus raises uh, what you call Lazarus from, uh, from death. And okay. I showed him, like, this is the God I follow. I, got, I follow God of mercy. I don't follow God who, who calls himself as a man or a king and literally is cursing people in the Quran. And that really, really pinched him more and more. Because you know what is... To... Sorry, go on. No, sorry. So he, he it really, it really affected him more and more. And especially he took the Gospel of John and he said, I, I have nothing to say because that is an issue for me too. And then he went and then he said, one day when he come back, he'll, he'll have another good stuff for me. I was like, thank you, God. At least I saw the seed. May God help him now. Yeah, you know what is interesting is that you just mentioned God is the Christian God is a God of mercy, right? He's a God of justice. We, according to Christian theology, we should be punished for our sins in the sense that you accrue all of this um, sin and therefore you cannot enter heaven in an impure state, right? But we on our own cannot achieve the necessary purity. So God says, well, you know, I love you, so therefore I will send my son to earth to die as a person, as a human, and then he will resurrect and he will pass through death. He will take on your sin. He will suffer for that sin. He will pay the price for that sin. And therefore he will he will take that sin upon himself and therefore you are able to be forgiven and enter heaven. So, so he dies for our sin. That's the Christian theology. That's our story. In Islam, there is no sense of redemption in fact the only way that a muslim can guarantee even muhammad said he doesn't know if he's going to step into paradise right because allah is capricious allah can change his mind at any second and deny you heaven the only way that a muslim is guaranteed paradise is to kill and be killed in jihad to take the lives of others to sacrifice uh, sacrifice others to allah so then you can intercede on many up to 72 according to some records of your relatives. So if you are willing to either kill yourself as a suicide bomber, or you are willing to go kill others, stab them to death, blow them up, shoot them, whatever the case might be, that is how you earn paradise. That is how you guarantee yourself entry into heaven. That's the exact opposite. I mean, isn't that just a crazy, do you think he got this distinction? I genuinely, genuinely believe the view, the distorted view people get, how did this and get all these distorted views and and it still brought up this understanding of religion where there is no mercy but it's only like oh the justice i don't see justice in islam whatsoever like if i if i read everything like even in the quran uh the quran itself is such an unjust book that's where i say go hallelujah success so just just even in the quran when i see the unjust I do. I have an issue. Like I generally believe that I think we are people. People are blinded somehow because they try to. They try to argue like, look, look, like God. Like how can God die for our sins? Like that you. Like your God needs some sort of blood payment or something. I'm like seriously. You're the one talking to me. The one who. The one. The one God who gives his. Who gives your sins upon the shoulders of a Christian and a Jew. Like seriously, you have got a leg to stand on when you talk about these things, and that gives them that gives them a shut up call, and then they start bashing me. <laughs> right. Tell me what what message seems to have. I mean, I know you've you've been a Christian for what eight months now, nine months. What message do you think really touches Muslims? I I don't mean obviously the the moral failings of Muhammad seems to have a massive impact on them. When Muslims are exposed to that, it really seems to open their eyes. But what Christian message do you think really if we were in the audience, as we are now, if we yeah. were to talk to a Muslim, what message really drives home or, or opens the door? What do, what do you think is the something that, that really changes their view or opens, plants that seed or whatever in their mind? I would say uh, to every Muslim that I've spoken to, I would have to say the Beatitudes, the Mount of the Sermon, is a perfect example because when they read that, it touches them somehow. They somehow their their eyes go a bit weary because they read something and it completely contradicts everything that Quran teaches. Everything, the moral standing, the the upholdings, Allah talking about this or this or this. Everything diminishes everywhere. 
when you when Muslims when I speak to them about this, blessed are the peacemakers for what they call the children of God. It touches them more, this line, because blessed are the peacemakers. And I'm like, was Muhammad a peacemaker? Was is Allah a peacemaker? Does he not curse us? Rather than rather than guiding us, does he not curse us? This really, really affects them a lot. I think you have to pinpoint in regards to like how beauty, how much beauty there is in Jesus Christ. I mean, it says and, here, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say evil against you because of me. Whereas we yeah. just saw in Islam, they have to kill those who insult Muhammad. Do, do you think that the difference between Jesus and Muhammad actually stands out to them? Absolutely. This is where they say, like I say to them, you can say it, you can bash me. You've thrown stuff at me. You've chucked everything at me. You had the right to speak to me the way you want to. Did I... Like, I still tolerated everything. I still had the tolerance to do all of this. Yes, I am going to call you out for because of your extremism and everything, but I am allowed to. And especially, I can converse about these things. You guys come to, you guys, you guys uh, go to violence. You guys just start going, uh, going berserk on everything. You start bashing people. You start threatening people. If anybody says about Jesus, do we do that? And this really touches them because it shows that our character, we are so tolerant. We have such, uh, we have such capacity to take all this in and say, we can listen to you no matter what, what much, how much you bath about everything. We still have the tolerance because we still get persecuted by you. We get mentally uh, what do you call it, abused, we get verbal abuse, we get physical abuse, but we still are able to converse this is what makes this is what our Christianity, this is what makes us a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Are you so concerned? That really them. That's that's actually Sorry? really no, that's interesting. The the kind of message that, that would touch them to talk about mercy versus the God of this angry Allah, this very violent Allah. So that really makes a difference to them. And what about Coming back to the moral issue, because I know surveys do show that the, the moral issues with Muhammad really yeah. is one thing that pushes Muslims out of Islam when they are exposed to this and they cannot deny it. Um, so promoting the moral message of Jesus, talking about his example versus Muhammad, shouldn't that then also have an effect to show the difference? Because you're giving them, you're showing them the bad thing, but then you should also yeah. give them a compelling alternative and show them. Look, here's that story that's so ugly. Here's a better story. Here's a better thing to give you. <clears throat> the only thing I would have to say is supposedly, I'm talking to a Muslim. I spoke to him in regards to pedophilia. I said to him, okay, your prophet did this for you. Let's talk about this that. Let's just come to a point where you can go online, watch a testimony, of a child who's been sexually abused, now is a grown-up. Imagine what they've been through. See what happens to them. They're, they're mentally scarred. They're physically, they have issues. They have an issue with their sexuality. They have so many problems in their life. They have so much frustration. Imagine that happening to anyone from a 51-year-old man and then a 50 or 54 54 year old just watch that and then see or imagine that being your sister or anyone that you know how do you feel that honestly honestly it 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 cracks them more it's some sort of like there, there's two kinds of people there's there's two kinds of people what happens is say some people start justifying pedophilia even more or some people really break down and they said and they start literally to be honest with me is that we can't resonate with it either but but look how much beauty there is in islam and then i'm like really there's a beauty in islam okay show me you're conversing with me as a human being you can shake my hand or you can talk to me much more in a more civilized manner but muslims if i speak to you about anything or if another muslim comes up and I speak to him the same way. You know, he can bash me. He can treat me wrong. He can call me all sorts of things. But the thing is, just look at the fact, look at the whole understanding that 
you as a Muslim can converse with me, but there's many Muslims out there who can't converse with me about these things. So that makes you a better person. Because Islam teaches that you shouldn't even, you, you shouldn't even initiate a uh, conversation with me. You should literally p- push me uh, to, the, uh, to the narrowest path. The, these are the same things, but you as a Muslim are morally more superior than your own Islamic teaching. How, what does that say about you? That affects them more and more. So giving them these tidbits just to make them understand and, and to have a decent conversation with them, it really, really attracts uh, what you call them to me and they have like a very decent conversation. And maybe I'm still trying to sow some seeds and say, this is how you should uh, what do you call it? How you should be, and this is who you really are. You're better than this man. You're better than being a Muslim. Right. Think about these things. And that I mean, really, most really Muslims counts. are better than Muhammad. Exactly. <clears throat> How can you be better than your prophet? <laughs> that makes no sense. Who is the best example for all mankind through the end of the ages? Like honestly, that's that's where it is, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, every, everybody might have noticed I have to watch my back constantly. Uh, it's because uh, when you're threatened thrice uh, in one day... Yeah, the day police have moved on, out. right? The police are no longer there, right? Uh, the police are completely gone. So yes, there is no police there whatsoever. It's and you're just alone? majority Muslims. Uh, alone? I am alone. I am alone. There's some, there's some Christians here, but I think many, many other guys. Yeah, now the guy hovering in your background with the hood on makes looks very suspect. Uh, the guy directly oh, yes. behind you, he's very suspect. Yeah, see, that's that's what it is. So, which is why uh, when I look at my back, now I, he's come to check you out a couple of times. He walked past you a couple of times, checked you out. Look, man, if I was working, I'd be keeping an eye on this guy, waiting for for action. So absolutely. yeah, absolutely. So um, that's what that's why I have to say. Thankfully, I know a bit of self defense. And I have an umbrella to yeah. have a, someone, you know, as a... Someone was asking, I mean, I do training as well. I'm, I'm hoping to... I, I've got some interesting things going on and hopefully I'll be able to do some work. But I mean, this is this is made of rubber. So YouTube, this is not real. This is purely for training purposes. But I, I do lots of fun things like these things. I, these are on my desk all the time. This is for training. So it's blunt. I have, I have a few more behind me. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I I still stay sharp. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> you have to. And um, you know, I talk to. Let's just say I, I talk to people. I still. Uh, I mean, you know, I talk to people that I know people that know people. Let's let's put it that way. So, yeah. <laughs> but you um, have but to. That's, no, you do. I mean, so yeah. I mean, look. I hope it doesn't come to that. But obviously, we know that. I mean, what happened to Salman Rushdie? I mean, after what thirty years. I mean, that's insanity, you know, I mean, are you planning to leave? Look, I don't want to keep you. I want you to leave the park before it gets dark, right? So it's still safe. No, it's, okay. it's, all, it's, it's still safe around, so it's all right. Yeah, but I don't want them to follow okay. you to the station and isolate you. And then, you know, what I'm, that happens. I, I have my tricks that trust me. I will, I, I can't say this the publicly, but there are certain tricks that I use in you order know, to hurt back home safely. Yeah, I know. Uh, Villainous is saying there was some weird guy in a hoodie that was hovering in the background earlier. Yeah, he's still there. He's still there. Just over over the left shoulder. Look over it. There you see him right there. And there's another guy, but there, there was there was a couple of people earlier. I mean, I, I noticed these things. Um, but that guy, even the guy with the backpack is a bit weird. Just turn around. There's a guy with a backpack, white jacket, black pants. Even that dude is... Yeah, you... No, no, to your right. Oh, oh. Yeah, you'll see him there yeah. over the shoulder. That guy, there's just something about his posture that, that stands out to me. I'm not sure what it is, but for some reason, he catches my attention. Everyone else, okay, the guy in black, of course, the black hoodie. There's also the guy in the other hoodie that his posture is too leaning forward. He's got his weight forward, leaning forward. So he's over your right shoulder. He's in the group that's far away from you. That guy has a posture that tells me this guy's ready for action. It, it disturbs me just to see that. Oh, yeah. He's not... Oh, yes. For anyone who's had tactical training, some of you guys have been in the military. I mean, they teach you about the baseline, all of that stuff. That guy's he's above the baseline. And uh, so, you know, there's a few of these guys. Well, hello, hello, Speaker's Corner. <laughs> no, nah, dude, that's actually really bad. I mean, obviously, it's going to bring, it's gonna bring this, that kind of devout Muslims. So that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate, but yes, brother. Uh, sadly... Uh, 
but we still have to say we have to stay strong and we have to say uh, Islam can fall. So, in all honesty, we I have to say all these things. I have to show that we are here and we're not scared. Because if we if we show if we just if I just walk away, they win. You know what? Well, you know what I, I think, think, though. Your message must be so powerful, and theirs must be so weak that they have to do this to drown it out. Because there must be something about your message versus their message that that threatens them so deeply that they have to use violence. They have to use force and intimidation. It's because a lot of people are affected by my message. I have very good, decent conversations with a lot of Muslims. A lot of Muslims will have one-to-one -one conversations with me. And trust me when I say this, the Muslims will come up and try dragging them away from me because yeah. I'm having a decent conversation with them. This is how extreme it's become. So, uh, yes, unfortunately, the message is good, thankfully. But as mm. I say, God, oh, God also protects and also thankfully, uh, you know, within myself too. Uh, I am wary, so it's more, it's, it's like, you know, be as innocent as a dove, the wise as a serpent. Yeah. So I'm definitely, I definitely have to be wise as a serpent too. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I know I might ask questions that repeat, but, but sometimes, uh, even for myself, I need to hear it more than once. But what is the message of Christianity? Besides, okay, now we've done with, the, there's the immorality of Mo that, that was a problem, but... For you personally, what is the message in Christianity that really draws you and what inspires you the most? <laughs> so what inspires me the most about Christianity, I think, is the Mount, Sermon of the Mount. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got two Christians. Oh, yeah, there's another ex-Muslim uh, who, who is here, literally in the background. Uh, right. So, yeah, these two are Christians as well. Um, so Ishmael, ex-Muslim, and Jason... Uh, but Jason is a Christian, but Ishmael is an ex-Muslim Christian. So yes, we do have people like this over here. And I do have to say, God oh, bless. Uh, so that's what I have to say. We have people like this even, like they're just left. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, we, when I converse with people, I say my, my literal devoutness comes because the love of God for us. Mm -hmm. Imagine it's such a loving God where we, I read the Sermon of the Mount, where God has literally, monogamies, God gave us only begotten Son just to reconnect us back with Him. Like, honestly, how much of a beautiful message that is. And especially just reading the Sermon, just reading, re reading the New Testament, his, his teachings, His life, like the, like the love He has for His for his, for his creation is so it's so astonishing and so heartwarming that really affected me more and more to the point where I completely said if I have to follow someone that will be him that will be the right. ultimate all loving God who is just and who has who who came upon the earth for our salvation that's right. the God I will I will follow this is what brings me more and more closer and closer and closer to Christianity than I ever would have thought wow hold on one, one sec so Gergli Oskolas thank you very very much for that that is really kind of you um, uh, I'm not sure which currency that is but but thank you very much uh, let me just get to that. It says here, thank you both of you for the work that you do. From Gerigli, thank you very, very much. Much appreciated. Very kind. So, yeah. Um, really, thank you kindly for that. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so so your work clearly has, has impact on people and it inspires others. I have a question. <clears throat> I once read some time ago where someone, it was a discussion about how to get people to leave Islam and come to Christianity. And then someone said, you know, have you said to a Muslim, come to church with me? Have you actually said that? Have you invited to a service? Have you invited them to your community? And, and, and someone said they'd never done that. And someone said they tried it and it had the most shocking effect. This person was like, yeah, I've never been to a church. I'll go. And it said the service was completely not what they expected. It had a profound impact on them. So your thoughts on that? Um, I literally had a Muslim couple coming to my church this morning. 
uh, which I had a beautiful conversation with because they asked me about the Trinity, they asked me about God, and they asked me about the beauty in my church. And I, I, I answered all their questions with all, my, with all love. But unfortunately, I personally cannot invite people to my church because it is sadly because I have threats on me and it will threaten my church, it will threaten the people in the church. So for that perspective, I personally won't be able to invite people in the church because mm -hmm. I have to safeguard the church and I have to safeguard my part of my priests and I have to safeguard everyone inside the church. And I don't want to, uh, and also, especially it gives away where I go to church too, which can okay, no, be just no, no, your safety, safety, of course. Do you think others should maybe do it that non, no, not, not people with blasphemy hanging over their heads, but oh, yeah. Christians should do this? I, I believe they should because they, this will really help them because it will understand, it will make them understand, yeah, so what is Christianity all about? Like they have just a very distorted view from the imams or just a hearsay. But once they actually go in. Like the way we did this, they said, is this Talawat going on? And I'm like, no, 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 this is more like the chant. We are reading the Psalms and they loved it. They enjoyed it so much. So I was yeah. really glad that someone invited them in the church. But sadly, and with my situation, I can't, but I would definitely advise the people if you can. And if they are happy to, you never know. God might touch them and touch their hearts. So it's always a blessing when something like this yeah. happens. You know, I used to deal with a group. <clears throat> I'll speak about it a bit now because um, uh, there, was, there was a group that was very popular some years ago. Um, by a certain gentleman whose channel is very inactive right now. Um, they really just got to the point where I think as a business they wanted to sell books rather than rather than do anything effective. And I did some work with them, I did some training for them. And... Uh, anything going on there? Yeah, 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 it's just more like people are going drama. Do you have a charger by any chance for iPhone? <clears throat> uh, now, if your battery is going flat, look, you need to keep some battery for when you go home, right? You want to keep some no, battery. No, 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 I've got, I've got, I've got a battery over here, so it should be fine. No, no, that's, I've got the watch, so it's all right. No, no, but you're going to need to make phone calls. Or you look, you look, things can go wrong, and then you need to be able I to have, use your phone. I have this watch. The watch can make the calls, so it's all good. I've okay. I've got the on the watch, so it's all good. But I'm just asking if in, they, in case they have a charger, don't worry about it. I can still keep going. Yeah, how much, how much good, battery sir. do you have left? Because I... I Oh, I still have like what uh, twenty five percent, so it's all good. Okay, okay let's let's give it a few sir. minutes and then we'll call it a day. Um, oh, are you gonna go for part three, sir? Uh, we can always uh, we can always meet again. I think next week I need to meet with um, Thunderous because he's available Ooh. again, and I can always Perfect. invite you on as both of you, and we can have three on the channel. You, me, Thunderous, and we can all chat together uh, from the audience. So let, let me just throw this to the audience, um, guys. Any questions from the audience? Okay, so Valinus has asked. Uh, what about your job situation? I know you can't reveal too much. You've got to keep that low key, but uh, you are full time employed, I believe, right? Uh, unfortunately, not anymore. Uh, I was sadly after what's happened and everything detrimental uh, with the video going viral. I had to be let go. So uh, this oh. is me, and unfortunately. As we, as we say, things happen, and there we go. The Islamist is now looking, and he is. Okay, go, go. Thankfully, it's going away. That's all right. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, unfortunately, it took its toll. The video has taken its toll where people have disassociated. And even mm. I was let go from everything. So, my livelihood has been, has taken a bad turn. But I really did not sorry. expect it to. It's all right. I, I did not expect it to be this bad. But thankfully, uh, as we say, as St. Paul says uh, in Romans, uh, perseverance builds character, character builds hope, and the hope is in Christ. So God, God is good, and the blessing. Wow, is I'm honestly. still. I'm sorry. I mean, that's but hopefully a better door opens up for you. I hope something better yeah. comes along. So sorry for me, guys. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, I was I was not full time employed until a year ago. So even I, you know, things you know things are, you know, sometimes you just you just keep pushing and until things change, right? Uh, Alethea says, have you had kickback from other Christians against your approach? Have you Absolutely. had any sort of pushback? Uh, the Christians have told me that I should be much more calmer because uh, I was a Muslim too once. 
and I'm like, okay, I can be calmer with people who can actually have a decent conversation, but someone literally is touching me. Someone literally is throwing stuff at me. Someone's literally spitting around at me. And I should be okay with that. And especially them saying that they will do this and they will do that. And I should not say anything. I should shut up for the sakes of it. No, I have to tell them something in order for them to understand that this is not this kind of language they are allowed to use because people can fight back too. But unfortunately, the tolerance is too extreme with some Christians. Like there, there's like there's there's a lot of like I think there's a lot of weakness. Unfortunately, when it comes to the Christianity in the West, but when mm-hmm. I see the Christianity in the East. I see some serious, serious, like, headbutting. Like, people actually can converse and people say, no, this is wrong, and we're going to call it out the way it is. But in in the West, unfortunately, I have seen where people just, because because they say, no, we don't want to come, we don't want to offend people, we don't want to, we don't want to yeah, say that, the wrong thing. Yeah. If I can That's pause for a moment, um, guys, um, you've heard Francis' situation, which is very unfortunate that he lost his job because of his evangelism. If anyone wants to donate anything, if you if you donate anything right now, I will make sure that that gets to Francis. I'll make sure that that I pass that on to him. If anyone wants to contribute to him, or set up a GoFundMe or something. So guys, um, do do you have, have like social channels where anyone can follow you and maybe help you in any way? I have a Go GoFundMe setup. I will send you the link, brother. In all honesty, uh, unfortunately, I have. I have it taken its toll. Right, I have officially got a charger so we can keep continuing. Brilliant. That's perfect. So yes, I unfortunately have a go go for me set up. Okay. Uh, so if anyone wants to contribute, uh, please do. Uh, whichever you put, you can. Or even if you don't want to contribute, the prayer is beautiful as well. So whichever way you can do, God, uh, God, is, uh, God is good. God has blessed me in many ways. Just always remember, guys, I'm not like like a lot of people say. You as a Christian is asking and everything. Like how how do you resonate with the fact that we should we are being persecuted, so we should actually be or be happy about it. But also in Christianity, we also have a livelihood, right? Like I, I've just dropped your GoFundMe link in the channel. I've just dropped the GoFundMe link there. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. So let me just do this that. Is- I just found it, and so guys, yeah, yeah, this is you. So I've just dropped. The name over there and then just above it is the link so just have a look above so this is the thing just... <clears throat> yeah unfortunately unfortunately this is this is the issue that we have to tolerate uh thank you sir very kind of you so this is the issue that we have to tolerate unfortunately whatever take it takes its toll but I, I honestly, I did not expect Christians to bash me more and more because they said, yeah, like this, like if you were, if you came across a bit better as a better human being, maybe this wouldn't have happened to you. And I am literally like, I'm, I'm dumbfounded with the fact that you're telling me that I should shut up and not say anything, allow, allow everything to happen the way it is happening. I'm yeah, you need to be tolerant. You have to accept everything. Just roll over and play dead like a good Christian should. Exactly. Like I literally brought a Christian over and said to said to her, like, is Muhammad a pedophile? She just kept her mouth shut. I'm like, you're evangelizing here as well to Muslims, and you're not even backing me up by stating a true fact. And literally, that was the most. I I I don't know how to say it, but it was the most wanting thing. Like all these Muslims are saying, ah ha, look at that Christian. Like even she dis- she disagrees with you. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Yeah, just so you know, Carmel has donated $20, and I have you put your thank GoFundMe you. link, so thank you, Carmel. Um, Catherine asks, is Francis his birth name? No, it is not. It's his legal name. He has changed his name from his former um, name, so yeah. Yes. yes, I had to, uh, for my own security reasons, I had to change my name, um, because sadly... Uh, I have got fatwas on me. I have got a lot of death threats on me, uh, which is why uh, I have to be very cautious. And that's why the biggest thing is people say you can just apply to a job, you know, like you're, you're a smart person, you can speak English, whatever. But the thing is, I can't just randomly apply jobs to Indeed because even that is a security threat for me. If there is a Muslim sitting at the back and, and knows and watches my video, if he gets to know more, gets, gets his hand on my CV, 
what's stopping him from giving out my address to other people and then me being doxxed this is why i have to be so overly cautious with everything and i live in london literally this is this is where it come to i live in yeah, london man. even then i have to be cautious with what i yeah, do yeah you know i have to go right. so i had a you know cuz yeah i mean there are muslims in every sector of industry in the uk and if someone's in hr and you know you have to wonder you know i mean you know that that's something that i think about as well i mean even here in poland you know i have family that i need to think about because i mean this the risk is maybe small but it's there and um i've disassociated from all my family on social media i'm not connected to anyone <laughs> i'm related to which is insanity but you have to do it you know and i mean i'm not let's just say i'm not desperate to send anybody to expensive care but if the, if it needs to happen it will happen right but this is the world we live in exactly this is where i say a lot of people will tell me like you you, you like literally people have said to me you brought this upon yourself and to those people i say i do this to bring people out of the cult of islam i bring people to christianity in the ways that i give them time to heal i don't bash them and just say no, okay now you are another muslim so come to christianity no i don't i i i have ways to converse with people i just don't go around and just start by preaching christianity for the sake of preaching no i first tell them the truth about islam and then i converse with them and then they converse with me about christianity that's how a conversation happens it's it's just me constantly just evangelizing for the sake of evangelizing is that's not the tactics that i use i have a very different way that i converse with people i would have like a lot of people have an issue in regards to how i uh would call it how i speak to muslims and i call them pedophile apologists and uh, i say that i don't resonate with pedophilia whatsoever you cannot justify these things with me even right. then i would say yeah the christians would say to me but you know like we should be we should be just stay together we should not speak like this we should have much more understanding yeah. because there was a human being too and like if i'm not going to call a pedophile a pedophile what do you want me to call him yeah minor what is the name for it the, you know yeah, map they call them map, maps no no exactly. a map is That's... a minor attracted pedophile <laughs> exactly this is where it is isn't it so yeah alethea says god bless you francis uh, this sorry, christian sorry. supports you may the lord make us sorry. worthy of his suffering so. Yeah, sorry to say, literally just an Islamist came next to me while I'm speaking about pedophilia. This is wow. <laughs> this is what I have to put up with. That's what I'm saying. Like, <clears throat> but yeah, sorry about that. Uh, sorry to intrude, but yeah, thank you, brother. Please, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. God bless you too. And I hope just pray for me, brother. I really, really appreciate all that you guys do, all your prayers. literally your prayers are the beautiful thing and that really helps in every regard because prayers are powerful no matter what people say yeah no yeah um any any sort of anything else that you think is of relevance i know because you're obviously keeping your head in a swivel there as i'm noticing no no um, no no i'm fine now i have uh, thankfully uh, the people uh, the i think the muslims uh, the aggressive ones have left and they're going a bit further that way yeah point. but that guy so, with the hoodie is right. still behind you and he's walking towards you know over your left shoulder right shoulder oh yeah 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 no so so this this okay so this guy he's an he's an atheist so he also actually helped me uh with because some some muslim was threatening me and literally he went up to him and said uh i don't care like do not threat, do not threaten him or otherwise i will do something so he is not a christian but he is at least someone who disagrees with pedophilia so okay. a lot of he has even come up to me a lot of hindus have come up to me uh sick you name it people have come up from different walks of these three weeks and have said to me we completely agree with you no matter how, no matter how people these muslims would try to defend this pedophilia is pedophilia so we're not going to we're not going to accept it and i i love it like thankfully that people are at least waking up so at least there's some something good is happening because of this I mean yeah hold on we just see if I can get um we discussed some of this last week we spoke about some of this um <clears throat> um I'm just thinking of a particular word I need to find within the notes 
Um, uh, for instance, here, I mean, just want to go, since we discussed pedophilia, let me do this. I'm just going to share the screen with you again so you can see what I am seeing. Like, for instance, for the audience, um, this is one of the rules of marriage. So a husband who accuses his wife of adultery is disciplined, which is a great thing. If a man accuses his wife of adultery, he is disciplined. And however, it says here that, um, right, when adultery is impossible, such as when the person accused is a mere infant. So he's he's disciplined if a man accuses his infant wife. Now, infant is defined in the Sharia as a baby in the cradle, right? Now, because the, the ruling, the logic is that a baby in the cradle could not actively solicit sex from someone. So they had to be accosted by another man and they were therefore not guilty of adultery. So the husband cannot accuse his wife of adultery if she's only six months old. A year old, two years old. Does that make any sense to you? I, I just want I just want to vomit. I honestly want to vomit listening to that. <clears throat> filthy, vile, vile, filthy people who believe that such things are permissible. Those who read such things, and they're still Muslims really need to look within themselves of what are they what, are they really really thinking that their allah is going to send them to heaven their allah is actually going to protect them their muhammad is going to intercede for them like are they seriously seriously yeah with all their heart think that this is okay and this is and they still say in islam after reading this they really i honestly am yeah. <laughs> why does it not shock me I just want to mention, someone says Muslims seem to know how messed up their philosophies are. They are just too afraid to admit it. And I probably, that's probably true. Rigovich says, God bless you, Francis. Forgive me as I made a comment on your video. Read pedif, pedif, <laughs> read that thing. As I thought you were too yeah. harsh. I understand you more now. And hopefully you can understand as well that the Sharia, there is no lower age limit for a man to have himself a wife. Okay? None. There is no lower age limit. And then um, glory to JDM says, I sent the brother 40. It's not much, but stay strong. God bless. No, thank you. I need that. You're too kind, sir. Every, yeah. every little helps, sir. I'm sorry I'm giving a Tesco out here. I know every little helps. Every British person would know. But no, honestly, every, every little does help. Thank yeah. you, brother. God bless you. Honestly. You know, um, there's a word that I need. Um, or, okay, hold on. I'm going to get this word. Let me find this. Let me get some references to pedophilia in islam so this is within the islamic marriage laws right so if if the offender someone who commits adultery is someone with the capacity to remain a virgin then he or she is stoned to death right that is within islam stoning to death and a person is not considered to have the capacity to remain a virgin if he or she is prepubescent at the time of marital intercourse So hopefully you can understand that even I get very upset about this because we're not talking about someone molesting a 16-year-old. You're talking about someone molesting a three-year-old, a two-year-old, right? This we're is legal. We're talking about child here. Yes. Right. Pubescent. This, this, at the time of intercourse. This, 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 of intercourse. this is legal in Islam. This is considered holy. That's it. And this is where you say, why do I not, why can I not disclose these things? And when I say to people, this is wrong, and then even Christians and everyone else tells me, you need to change your ways because you're too, you're too aggressive. How can you not have aggression towards some, something such extreme and evil Because like this? the most, the greatest Christian virtue is to be inoffensive, Francis, don't you know? Mm, yeah, I've come to Jesus, know that the Jesus hard way offended nobody. Don't you know Jesus offended no one? Yeah, Jesus was a hippie. As I was going to them, literally. skipping through the valleys. Oh yes. Yeah. 
He offended not a single person. He was polite, never argued, always rolled over, played dead when needed to. Yeah. And let's continue. So, no guardian may marry his prepubescent daughter to someone for less than the amount typically received as marriage payment by similar brides, nor marry his prepubescent son to a female. So it says here, you can do that. And let's continue. And then they speak here of the divorce of a wife who is prepubescent. Now, why would you need to divorce a prepubescent wife if it doesn't happen in Islam? That's, that's really weird. A waiting period is obligatory for a woman divorced after intercourse, whether the husband and wife are prepubescent, have reached puberty, or one has and the other has not. In other words, the other has not reached puberty, prepubescent. Intercourse means copulation. Doesn't mean anything else. So, yeah, the waiting period for a woman does not menstruate, whether prepubescent or postmenopausal is three months. That's Quran 65 4 right there for us. So, yeah, so hopefully people have an idea what prepubescent means in Islam and what the implications are. <coughs> that's, yeah? that's literally where I say to where I say to all the Christians, what I'm doing is opening people's eyes. I'm not doing it just because I'm so I'm sort of like a more moral superior or I'm I'm sort of like a better human being than all these Muslims. No, I'm a sinner too. But I have to call it out the way it is for them to open their eyes and see. You cannot you cannot justify ugliness. You cannot justify evil. Yeah. So who oh. when when people like Muhammad Your, your GoFundMe has gone up by almost a hundred pounds by the way. Whoa. Oh thank you so much guys. <laughs> you do kind. Thank you guys. Um, Thank you, I everyone. do have to, like, like literally I have to say, like people like Muhammad Ishaq can come to Speaker's Corner, people like Ali Dawa can come to Speaker's Corner, they can say, we will have capital punishment for all the ex Muslim and we are proud of that. People like Muhammad Ishaq can come to Speaker's Corner and say, uh, about and, and de de define pedophilia in a way which is so distorted and ugly already. Mm -hmm. And then tell that, yeah, pedophilia is, uh, yeah, you get the worst of pedophilia. He's justified pedophilia in Islam. But I, as a Christian, can come up and say, to hell with you all. There is no yeah. justification for pedophilia. But I, I'm the baddie because I say it the way it is. But any, but all the Christians watching this pedophile, the pedophile apologist saying whatever they feel like. But yeah. they are allowed to say it at Speaker's Corner. But a Christian says something. All the Christians go mad at me. All the Muslims were mad at me. That doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. You know, I had many Christians also give me grief for being too aggressive, for being too, um, you know, too harsh in my language, for whatever. But they don't understand Islam the way I do. They didn't spend 11 years in the Middle East seeing the dysfunction face to face like I did. I didn't see Islam in a movie. I was there. I, I was... I had to live with the threat of kidnapping. I had to live with the threat of being shot. I had to live with, in the culture that, that I could see the dysfunction. I was amongst the Palestinians. I saw the Syrian refugees. I was on the border. I went to Iraq. It wasn't theory. That was practice, right? I had to make sure that they, they didn't kill other people. That was my job. So, yeah, it's not like it was theoretical, but, but people gave me a very hard time as well. And, um, you know, so, question, do you... Do you see people using my Sharia material and do you think it would make a difference? The fact that the Sharia is so explicit because with the Quran and Hadith, everyone goes in circles. Now, people mentioned David Wood earlier in the chat. David Wood, in my, my opinion, I mean, he's very been very powerful, very effective. He inspired me, inspired many of us, but he hasn't said anything new in the last eight years. He's been saying the same thing since, I don't know, 2016, right? So, so nothing has changed. Now, I'm not saying that's not effective, but I think times are changing and we need we need to change because the enemy is changing. Do you think my Sharia material would be effective? Because it's very blunt and it's it's the it's where the rubber meets the road. It is the hard backstop. Exactly, because uh, because if you if you if if you are presenting Sharia sources or the Sharia material, of course I can bring it up to Muslims and say face to face, look what this says. Tell me how this is okay, and then it will corner them, right? But the thing is, even then, they will come up with arguments. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's online. This can be made up. Anyone can distort anything. We need full opinion. And then, then I would simply show me the evidence. Show me the exactly. nice Sharia. Show me the nice Sharia. By all means. Exactly. Not so much. Literally, like, like if right now, you can see behind me, there's a guy uh, in a cap, literally over here. He mm -hmm. Hashim. Uh, 
a full on you, you can watch him on YouTube a full on pedophile apology is so constantly this guy will call you or any name under the sun he will try reasoning every way possible with you about pedophilia and this is why i once said to him face to face that you can justify whatever the heck you want but you know what you're still uh a uh, still part of a uh, part of a in part of the religion where your prophets are pedophile so congratulations to you go on and jog on and literally and this is then they just bash you and they tell you all sorts of things and this is where i say to even the david wood who literally i i am so 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 respectful for that guy i've got so much respect for that guy because that guy brought me my family out of islam and that guy still really really has boosted my morale too like he i think he 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 uh, alongside many others is is very much of a reason of why i'm a christian today and how i left islam in the journey to route and watching him so that's where i have to say your sharia sources are important because they could be used i know some people have ego issues while they don't want to use someone so, else's material so do, are people aware of my material because you know that that you say they are aware of me and in fact i tend to upset oh, people yes. when my materials yeah. contentious do they think that my shari material is valid is actually worthwhile and and why aren't, are they using it is anyone using it and why not if they aren't well i think the majority of the people first of all the christians are not using it because obviously majority of the christians who come to this speaker's corner are very non-denominational evangelicals who's all about lovey dovey some orthodox christians come here like me uh but they get bashed by the non-denominational too because unfortunately we are not christians we are heretics some catholics come here these non-denominational make them run away because we are also uh, they are also heretics to them like they call us not christians so they cry us to cry to us all the time but i say when non denominations don't like you they wouldn't use it and then people like me who will come here and then show them your sources so it's just me trying to do that i i so I so, so they aren't that, using my sources because they don't like me <laughs> yeah just just because they don't like you obviously because you are a threat you are a threat to non denominational evangelicals because you speak and you expose martin luther Sorry. who <laughs> is somehow their their prince yeah Yeah, I know. I know. It's do you think it would be more effective than than the current polemics? Do do you think that discussing the Sharia would have a solid impact put the Muslims with their back up against the wall? Yeah, because uh because I think it's right now we are trying to have a moralistic argument. So we are trying to have like Quranic arguments. So once we go into Sharia and someone knowing Sharia, that will have a huge impact because right now if i discuss with uh, i if i discuss with anyone about sharia they will make billions of excuses of how how i don't know sharia and how it can be opinionated and stuff but if i present them their source and say this is what this is what the vile filth that lies in your sharia that becomes an issue because then they will be like okay i've shown i presented something which is literally clearly written in your books that will be like hmm what yeah. do we do now do we run away or do we call it false Yeah, so I mean it's it's dance. hard for them. They can, you can see when they start doing the dance steps. Um yeah. question from Jonathan Gemmel, does Francis have much experience with Sufism? And the question that we discussed a week ago or so, did you find any Sufic elements in the theology of Martin Luther? <laughs> let's let's try that. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, we just do did discuss about that. So Martin Luther having having a very one to one connection with God personally. that relates to a lot with sufism so sufism has this chuck uh this you know the way they do uh, rakshban so this more like uh they do this uh, circle dance that's yep. like literally like the divinity like going back uh, like a divinity doing the dance for god like they had that one to one connection with god ultimately but there is no sense of responsibility or distinct uh, discerning of if they are having this like relationship with god is that relationship actually the right one is it is it actually true is it not someone be deceiving them so they don't yeah. have that sort of like a reasoning with anyone else just because they think that way so it's from god but the thing is they will not like they will not scrutinize themselves this yeah. is what sufis do as well sufis do not like to scrutinize themselves and these non denominational christians and protestants have the issue as well 
they never scrutinize themselves. They always think, Holy Spirit will lead us. Okay, what if Holy Spirit, like some people literally come up to me. How do you know it's the Holy Spirit? It's your opinion. How do you know? Exactly. Like yeah. someone literally said to me, the Holy Spirit has told me because you are an Orthodox Christian now, that's why you are a heretic. And all of this is this is happening to you is because of your Holy Spirit that told me that person's a fool. True story. Can't you exactly. hear the voices? I can. The voices exactly. talk to me. <laughs> so literally, when people people like that come up to me and tell me. All of this, uh, all of this uh, bad times has happened to me because I'm you know, because I'm an Orthodox Christian, and I'm like, really? That Holy Spirit guided them, and I'm like, how how do you know that Holy Spirit guided you? Cannot yeah. cannot not be the devil yeah. who's trying to tell you that you're trying to try to like in my time, in my bad time, you're trying to argue and you're trying to tell me that. I'm, I have like all of this is happening because I've gone into Orthodox Christianity. Yeah, yeah like, let me mention some that's... context so people have an idea where, where I'm going with this, and then perhaps we can sure. call it an evening. I'd just like to wind down. I don't like to go longer than a certain amount of time. Yeah, sure. So, so briefly, so Martin Luther, I've been looking at his theology. It, it's a long, complex story, but obviously, what's been said about him has been presented very favorably. I'm trying to get through the partial misrepresentations, the the, the very biased one-sided view. So Martin Luther has a reflexive theology. The, the short and simple version at the risk of being wrong because I don't have the notes in front of me is that Martin Luther says you have to be, you have to have very strong confidence in your salvation that God approves of you. And then when you have this faith, this confidence, this inner confidence, this feeling of confidence that you are validated by God, you direct it at God, then God reflects it back to you and if you don't have confidence, then as you believe God is, so God is. So if you believe God has not saved you, then you're not saved. If you believe God has saved you, then you are saved. So if you are confident, if you feel, oh yeah, yeah, I'm good today. I am, I'm, oh gosh, good grief, I'm saved because, because, because feelings, because confidence, sorry, confidence, then I'm saved and therefore I am righteous and I am, I am elect and we are good to go. Thank you. Uh, thank you, God, for, being, for, for, for reflecting my confidence back at me. I am now saved. I am now righteous and the Holy Spirit loves me. Thank you all. True story. So this is, this is, a, this is your opinion of what God thinks of you based on your confidence. And this is very Sufic in a sense of direct communion, getting rid of the priest, getting rid of the church. You are, it's, it's, it's complete bogus trash now look it is cloaked in wonderful language it's cloaked in beautiful concepts when you boil it down it is just because i freaking say so because god says i am saved and there's nothing you can do about it because i say so because i feel it tell me i'm wrong that's all it that's all it is it's 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 trust me bro (laughs) am i wrong francis no you're absolutely right because this is what they do like supposedly uh, the Holy Spirit has led this person to believe that this is the way it is. And they do not want to scrutinize because they know the Holy Spirit says so because everything is positive in there. I'm like, okay, fair enough. So if this is, you feel your positivity and you, you, you're you saying that because this is how you feel, right? So what you're doing is you're not, so in, in Christianity, we put Christ in the center of everything. So what you're doing is you're putting your feelings alongside Christ. Yep. So how does that make you any better person? And then they say no, because the Holy Spirit is a is a uh, is is the one who guides us. So when we know the Paraclete guides us, we know that it. So guides how do they us. all come to different, contradictory, incompatible answers on doctrine and beliefs? It's, if they're all finding the truth, you'd think you'd have one plus one is equal to two. You get every answer but two. No, because the thing so, is, yeah. the Holy Spirit led them, brother. True story. True story. Exactly. Amen, brother. <laughs> Trust me, bro. <laughs> so, yeah, Trust so me, bro. Same, same with Islam. Like, don't read the sources. Don't go to sunnah.com because it's wrong. But trust me because I am right. So Protestant and the Sufi. Sufis have the same issue. Sufi, you can go to Balochistan and speak to all the Sufis in Pakistan, right? You will literally come to a realization they didn't, they are so pick and choose, like you know, like the Protestants or the non denominational. Yeah, uh, this is metaphorical, but this is not metaphorical. This is true, but this is not true. So, we believe yeah. in that. We believe but in although, this. Although, although it is required, this. 
Sufis are required to be fully compliant with the Sharia. Sufis must yes. be fully compliant with the Sharia. So yeah. that that people must understand. Sufis are not lovey dovey. All that all that nonsense yeah. stuff you saw in the Sharia, that they must be compliant with. Exactly. So so yeah, look, I'd like to wind down here. Maybe we can pick this up again next week. Because it's been like an hour and a lot. Uh, let me check how long we've been running for. Hour forty minutes. So I I've gone a little over time I normally would. Um, but Brando16 says, I've been repeating your Sharia work to everyone and his mother, but I'm warning them about Islam. No, thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, Alethea, yeah, I need to talk more about the Sufis. I'm not ready to really do that, but I can show you in the Reliance. So just look up the Sufis in the Reliance or the Traveler. Link in the description. Oh, yes. Just read it. It's it's all there. I mean, man, it's like, and Muslims will claim the Sufis are not Muslims, whatever. The, the greatest Islamic seminary on earth is run by a Sufi. Before him, it was run by a Sufi. And there are four schools of Sunni fiqh taught there. Plus, there are seven schools of Sufism taught there. Now, why would they teach at Al-Azhar University seven schools of Sufism if they weren't real Muslims? Like, please, man, tell me another good story. So, yeah, I'll wind That's down here. Your, your, your final comments from your side. <clears throat> uh, my final comments would be, uh, we, yes, I unfortunately had to converse from Speaker's Corner. Uh, we could talk about uh, my journey of, uh, in orthodoxy, but we will definitely pick that up next time for sure, because today was another exciting stream, but you had a different view today. I just, I'm glad that something different was shown on your channel, which will excite more people and give them understanding of how it's a different uh, and we get Speaker's Corner. So, Yes, this is the thing, and I would have to say thank you all for what you do, brother, and thank you to all the viewers uh, for keeping me in your prayers, helping in any way you right. possibly can. Your prayers are very much appreciated. Your all your what you do is very much appreciated, and in all honesty, we must definitely for sure next time talk about how I how I came to orthodoxy. So then okay. we have yeah. another discussion, brother. But uh, be surprised to be with you all, and thank you so much oh, for all that you do, Lloyd, and the team behind everyone who's behind it, even when you're a soul trader. But God yeah. bless you, brother, and all your viewers. Keep strong, and please pray for me as well. And just whatever you possibly can do, do not be a lukewarm Christian. Be someone yeah. with a zeal and cowardice is not an option anymore. Yeah, you know, it's like that line in um, Kingdom of Heaven, you know, tell the truth, even if it kills you. Like, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, the movie was historical fiction, but it was still a great film. I still enjoyed it, despite the, the nonsense, but yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much, Francis. So yeah, stay safe out there. Get, get home safely. God bless and you great for all the work that you do. It's fantastic that you do it, that you, after such a short period, you are willing to get out there and learn what you have to learn and do what you have to do, you know? Cowardice is not an option, yeah. Neither is failure. So yeah, Francis, thank you very much. And God bless. And everyone, thank you all for being here. Um, it's been a really great evening. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Good night. <laughs>